Hi folks, this is Linear Algebra, Checkpoint Quiz 9. I've got a set of four vectors, and uh, these guys are all three tuples, as they say. They're all a subset of R3. Part A, we're asked to explain why X could not be a basis for R3. Part B asks us to show that this is a spanning set for R3. And then Part C asks us to prune it down to get a basis for R3. So for Part A, Part A we can dispense with pretty quickly here. Since we know the dimension of R3 is 3, every, whoops, I could spell, we could dispense with this quickly, every basis of R3 contains exactly three vectors. Since x contains four vectors, x cannot be a basis. Okay, so we're done with that. Part B. Uh, part B and C really go together. There's two approaches to show that X spans R3. Um, and then, depending on which approach you use, there's a, there's a way to prune it down to R3. One of them uses the concept of row spaces. One of them uses the concept of column spaces. So, let's start with the row space approach. So, the row space approach, what we're going to do, we're going to make a matrix A that has each of these guys as rows. All right, so that's a four by three matrix. And the strategy here is to put A into row echelon form and show that the row rank of A is 3. That'll show that it spans R3. And then what we can do to print it down to a basis is we can track which rows zero out. And so we'll talk more about that when we get to it. Okay, here's our matrix A. The first thing we're going to do to to get it in row echelon form is switch row 1 and row 3. Now we're just going to replace these rows underneath it with the appropriate multiple of the first row to kill off those leading coefficients. So multiply it by negative 4 and add. Multiply this by negative 2 and add. And then I could just keep this, multiply it by 1 and add. I want to get a leading one in this position, and there's a couple of different ways to do it. The least painless way would be to divide row 4 by 8 and then switch it to go up to row 2. So that's what we'll do. Now we're going to do some adding a multiple of this row with the other two to wipe out what's underneath them. So multiply by 13 and add. So 
We're going to have 13 halves plus 8 halves is 21 halves. Give myself a little more room here. And then we're going to have uh, 19 halves plus 8. 19 halves plus 16 halves is 35 halves. And multiply this by, uh, oops, multiply this by two twenty firsts. And then finally zero out the last row by multiplying by the negative uh, 35 halves. Okay, so we know from class that a basis for the row space of A is the non-zero vectors in the row echelon form. So it's going to be 1, 5, 0, 0, 1, a half, 0, 0, 1. So what does that tell me? That tells me that I have three vectors, and since they're a basis, they're linearly independent. That means that they're a basis for R3. Now, row operations do not change the row space. The row space of this matrix is the span of the vectors in X. That means that the span of the vectors in X have to be all of R3. So there's a couple ways uh, to... to uh, to do this, we could say since the dimension of R3 equals 3 and the dimension of X, excuse me, not X, the dimension of the span of X, which is the row rank of A is also 3, the span of X matches R3. All right, so there's lots of different ways to explain why that's true. We could just invoke a theorem at this point. We have a subspace of R3 that has the same dimension as R3, so it's got to be all of R3. So no matter how you slice it, we've just shown that X spans R3.